Hey everybody, welcome back. We're going to be painting a brush rack today. Now this has been prepared a little bit ahead of time. What you see on here is actually watercolor that's been sealed in. And that's been using varnish from a rattle can. And we're going to apply some stencils here to it. You can see the stencil sheet here. And it's already been cut, but it's a little bit hard to, hard to get on camera. So the next step that we're going to have to do is take those stencils apart. I'm using a sculpting tool and a pair of scissors to help get them separated from the sheet. And that is a sheet of frisket paper along with a bunch of masking tape. So I'm going to go through the steps here on how to apply this stencil. Now the end goal will have three kingfishers, one on each of three sides of this brush rack. Two of them are matching but in reverse and one of them on the front. So the obvious first step to our stenciling is removing the stencil from the film backing, and I've already done so. Now, this frisket film has been cut using a Silhouette Cameo. Uh, some might also use a Cricut cutter. This is a way to take a digital image and turn it into something that's either cut out on paper or film or plastic or even draw or color with. Um, what I use here is graphics frisket film. And I'm actually not a huge fan of this film. The first couple of layers, you might notice that I actually peel up a little bit of paint accidentally applying the film and removing it. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later. So different kinds of frisket film, different kinds of masking tape all have different amounts of adhesion. Uh, adhesion. Regardless, uh, you don't want to necessarily peel up the back of your work as you're going along. Now as I'm applying this stencil this first one actually gets applied a little bit off kilter and we'll see that later on when we actually paint this but it doesn't make a huge difference here we're not going for full accuracy it actually plays into the style of the end piece just a little bit. So once this is stuck down you can rub your fingers along the stencil, along the, uh, the frisket film of the stencil and just kind of pat that down a little bit, especially around the edges where you will be painting. This makes sure that when we get the airbrush out it doesn't necessarily blow the stencil up and get paint underneath it. There will be a little bit of bleed through from time to time if things are a little bit too wet, but that's okay. Sometimes you can correct that, sometimes you can just kind of go back and work that in. But for right now, let's apply some masking tape around the border of the stencil. This will prevent some overspray on the areas outside of our stencil region. Now we just have to repeat the process for the other two sides. While I'm applying these stencils, let's talk a little bit about the source material. I found images of kingfishers and broke them down using the image program GIMP. Those are pictured here. And that is what we use to create these stencils. We just got the major colors, blocked them out, and created those in multiple layers. So the other two sides went much quicker, much more smoothly, and now we get to the fun part. This is where we actually start airbrushing our material. Now as I go, I'm taking it nice and slow, adding a lot of air to it, and making sure that I'm not getting overspray or anything flips up on my stencil. If it does, I immediately just put it back down, kind of give it a light press, 
And for this first layer, I'm actually just adding a straight black paint to it. And this is Vallejo Game Color Black. So you can see I'm hitting each side. I kind of rotate through each side, letting them dry a little bit before I hit them with kind of a second coat, second layer. Oh, i press that back down. And we'll just take it kind of slowly for this first layer, this first stencil, because this is going to be a repeated process. This is going to be four layers of stenciling, one on top of each other. So we want to make sure we get nice, consistent layers and that we do all of our work within that stencil before we move on. Now this stencil is a single color stencil, but the next three stencils will be multicolor. This is setting up the backdrop for the Kingfisher on each side, as well as the stick that the Kingfisher is standing on, or the rock in the case of the front facing side. So this will set up a very nice color for us, a very nice backdrop, kind of reset us from that white and blue that we have in the background. We'll be able to build on top of this. Now, once I have each layer of this stenciling done, because I am concerned about the durability of the paint between each step, I'm actually taking the time to go and clear coat this. I'm using, for the first two layers, I actually end up using Rust-Oleum Satin Clear Enamel. And for the last two layers, the blue and white layer that you will see, I will be using my traditional Model Masters flat coat. So that will give me some relative protection between each of the steps, but I will get some peel up and we'll see that shortly. So before we move along, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and remove this first layer of stenciling. You can see I got a little bit of overspray there on the side arms that hold the brushes, but we'll take care of that at the very end. And we'll see a little bit of this peel up. Now we did use some of that protective enamel before we even started. So even that couldn't protect us fully. But let's see the end result. Now we can see the results after about six hours of curing, letting that clear coat dry. We've actually got a little bit of texture from the underlying paints, both the primer that we use, which is a rattle can primer, as well as the rattle can varnish. This is okay, but it may affect some of your stenciling, so just keep the, that in mind. Now, the next step that we are going to tackle is going to be adding our orange layer. Now kingfishers have orange bellies and a few orange feathers along their head. So the next stencil layer will be for that and we will be doing some multiple colors over it. One of the things that I try to be mindful about with masking tape is a lot of it's meant for more durable paints, like latex paint on walls, etc. Uh, so just be very mindful of this, especially with airbrush paint, not to kind of press it down too hard, but just kind of hard enough so it doesn't flap up. Uh, that's a good place to tap it down on the existing frisket stencil as well, instead of tapping it on the paint that you might have down, and just kind of roll up the corners where it might overextend on your work. Now I may have said three colors earlier, but I actually meant five. There's two highlight colors here, but our first color is gonna be an all over coat of mahogany. We're gonna follow up with a little bit of shading with burnt orange, 
and then some more detailed shading with orange finalizing out with a couple of details around the edges with some ivory and we're going to make the feet of the kingfishers very red using a bit of bold pearl red mixed in with that orange so this will give us kind of that orangey area on the bird's feathers Now I'm not going into great detail here on what I'm airbrushing or why I'm airbrushing. I'm mostly just showing you the techniques that I'm using to mask and stencil this. I, I will go ahead and say one thing here about what I'm doing with this layer, and this, this applies to the following layers as well. When you are applying multiple layers of paint, paint has thickness. So when you pull this stencil off, you will notice that the paint itself, if you've applied multiple, multiple layers of paint, will actually add a little bit of depth around the edges here. That can be a little detrimental. Sometimes that can be a weak point for paint to peel up or chip. That's why between these stencils, I'm taking the time to do the clear coating as well to make sure that that's a little bit more durable. Another aspect of that is letting your paint cure. Before I peel off the stencils, I'm kind of skipping around a little bit here through movie magic, but I am allowing the paint itself to dry for uh, probably a good 10 to 15 minutes before I actually peel up the stencil. You may notice that the edges of your paint might potentially peel up if you don't give it enough cure time. And honestly, you should really let paint cure even longer than that, even acrylic paints. So you'll notice that as I'm just blending this in, I'm just kind of taking my time. I'm, I'm kind of switching sides. I'm rotating it around because I really need this this paint to kind of dry so I don't accidentally get paint under the stencil. If, it, if that water kind of gets under it, it makes it less sticky and you'll get a little bit of bleed through, kind of like what we see around the edges here on the black. For this last bit, I'm just adding in some highlights with the ivory, and then like I said, I'm going to hit the feet with just a little bit of red to make them a bit more brighter. So even though I'm working within the bounds of a stencil, I'm not just filling the stencil, I'm also adding a little bit of texture and color to it. I'm not terribly confident with my 2D work, but this is great practice, and also this is really fun. So here we come to the part where we start peeling our stencils off and seeing the results of our labor. Now this is where disaster strikes. Unfortunately on this side, the adhesion of the stencil and the tape has actually peeled up a large part of our black paint as well as a bit of our blue backing through multiple layers of varnish. This is not good. You'll see it here in just a second as I finish removing the stencil. So you can see that on the front I've lost a little bit of my black and on the side I've lost quite a bit of my black including a little bit of where the orange should be. Now this is unfortunate because basically what has happened is the paint has stuck together just enough to pull neighboring paint up as well. Now 
you can very much see the level of paint has risen above the surface so we can fix this in a number of ways the first way is we'll just fill this back in this is a flat black layer so i'm going to bring in some paint i'm actually bringing in army painter black here just because i like that black paint quite a bit uh, it's a little bit more of a matte sheen, so it looks a little bit different until we finally finish out all of our flat coats. And then we'll try something different on the side. So that didn't quite work out as I expected. I filled in a bit of the black and decided to fill in with some mahogany to try to recreate some of the shading that I have on the bird and maybe airbrush that in, which I'm trying right now. But I just come to the conclusion that Honestly, it's just better if I turn this black and add a little bit of detail to make this look like the branch has uh, come in front of the feathering here instead. So you'll see me breaking out that black paint again. I kind of fill in the area that's been torn asunder and I add some just minor little branch tweaks here to the edge to make it look a little bit more natural. And I actually do a little bit to the other side of the stencil as well, just because I like the way it looks. There is nothing wrong with enhancing your stencil work with handwork. In fact, this is something that can really make something go from a 6 to a 10. All right, time for another clear coat. All right, at this point, we are moving on to our third stencil out of four. So this part will apply the blue tones to the feathers around the head and on the wings. Now I'm gonna do something a little bit different. This might be something that's helpful for you as well. I'm going to cut out a mask using paper. So you can integrate paper and plastic and just kind of pieces of junk or whatever you have around to mask off paint. Even old gloves or plastic baggies can be recycled into masking material just with a little bit of adhesion. So I'm going to apply these stencils and then we'll move right on to the painting. So you can see at this point I've used a combination of paper, of masking tape, and the frisket film to mask off the area. I don't have a full mask over the entire area, and I'm actually going to take it low and slow, so very light on the trigger, very light on the air. I'm mostly just throwing paint at this thing and trying to get a nice thick layer there. I have actually added less flow improver than I normally did, just kind of wetting the cup with it and then adding a bit of paint and kind of blowing the air a little bit harder. So I'm using a combination of paints here. I'm using Pro Acryl Blue, Sky Blue, and a little bit of ivory on this layer.
All right, you can see I kind of modulated that out just like the orange, and now it's time for another layer of varnish to protect that. So there will be another six hour jump right about now. Ah, that looks wonderful. All right, so I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit here into our stencil application process. You've seen this on the previous layers. Again, I'm using paper, masking tape, and the frisket film. And I've kind of lightly applied this down here to make sure that we're not getting any overspray anywhere. Now for this layer, I am using Procryl Ivory, and I'm going to bring in just a little black around the actual eyes of the bird. I don't know if I quite got it, but it did add a bit of nice contrast between that and the background of the bird. So let's take a look here. I'm just going to load the black in. Again, the Army Painter Black over this ivory, and we'll hit that eye on each of the sides. And there we have it, we've got all of the stenciling done. Now there's a little bit of cleanup work that we want to do here. I'm going to go ahead and get some white primer back out and hit the edges of the inside of the front, just because I've got some overspray down the sides here. You can see where I didn't cover it with masking tape, and this is a good example of what can happen. And this is why I'm kind of aggressive with the masking tape. Not only is the masking tape really good for things like this, it's generally one of the cheaper adhesive materials to get. Frisket paper, frisket film can be a little bit more, uh, or a little bit less cost effective. So use, use things where you can, reuse stuff. Um, it's always great recycling. It's always great being able to use some more common materials here. So I would suggest that unless you want to go back in and do what I'm doing and kind of touching things back up. But this is kind of the final step here, so let's skip ahead. And there you have it. This is the end result. So let's take a look at each of the three sides here. This brush rack has been varnished and is ready to go. I'm going to put a small topper in the top of this since this is going to be sent off to a lovely viewer, Kingfisher Games, who won this on my Twitch stream. And a big thank you to you who watched this video. Hopefully this was entertaining and informational. And if you'd like to catch more of me, check me out on Twitch on the weekends. Check me out here once a week on YouTube. And until then, paint some minis. Have a great week.